Snooker angle shots can be really difficult to work out, but I'm going to show you how you can be successful every time. With the aid of this thing, my blurry thumb, and some coastline, this is Break From Life. Welcome back, and if this is the first time you've watched one of our videos, then it's fantastic to have you here. The cam system that I've explained before in some of our videos isn't just a way of lining a shot up. It's a framework that allows you to go from selecting a particular shot to completing it successfully. You can use it on a shot like this or any pot to boost the chances of you potting the ball. And a few things will help you more to do this than having fully analog alignment. I'm going to use it to help me pot the black right now. It's a method that will help me to maintain clarity even under pressure when playing some important shots. When you successfully implement this technique there's very few other things that can actually go wrong. If you want to know more about the cam system then try our video snooker aiming system. It's on the Break From Life website that's in the card right now. You can also make a commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the Break From Life channel. The cam system is much more than just a ghost ball theory in which you play the first cue ball into the space that our imaginary second cue ball is in here in order to pot the red in this case. This is only how we initially line the shot up, it's not actually how we aim the shot, especially not when you're on the shot. Before you go to the shot you do however need to know where the white needs to go. But due to the way a human sees the world, aiming a shot like this isn't a good idea. I'll explain this a little bit later, but let's look first at how you could line a shot up. So the black is directly in line with the camera here. So in order to pot it, we need to get the white to contact roughly this point on the black that I'm going to point to with my cue here. So as you can see, if we go straight through the center of the cue ball and look at the black, and if we pick out that point that's directly in line with the pocket and then if we just play the center of the cue ball to the point I'm sort of pointing at with my cue here which is this point here if I play the center of the cue ball directly to there we're guaranteed to miss the pot to explain this well I'm going to need some coastline so I headed out on a long and arduous journey towards the coast this was the best way I could come up with to explain fractal lengths. I had to skillfully avoid some cars and endure a journey time that took me very nearly an entire minute, after which I got to some actual coastline. The bit of coastline I will be measuring will be from here to here, and to start off with, I'm going to use a ruler of this length. I found that between this, these two points, it was roughly seven times the length of this ruler. Now, then I started using a ruler that was only a third the size. So in theory, this should give me a length of 21 times the length of this ruler when in fact it gave me 23 and this is because this ruler would fit into the small gaps when this one wouldn't giving me a different length. This has allowed some people to theorize that coastlines have an infinite length. How does this help you? Well the difference in the two lengths of measuring stick can be thought in the same way as the difference between a cue ball and a tip. Now if I superimpose both of them together here you can see if we hit a ball where the tip is it is likely to go in this direction but as you can see the white will hit the green in this direction because it's too big to get past this point and hit the ball where the tip is hitting the green. If you stick your thumb out like this you'll find you can probably only focus on an area the size of your thumbnail. Give it a go right now. A snooker ball is a lot bigger than your thumbnail so it's not really possible for a human to aim a shot with a snooker ball. So initially line it up with a snooker ball and then aim it with something the size of your q-tip as a target. This is how you can do that. This is our brand new creation of virtual cue ball. Yes, it is a cue stuck in the end of a ball ball that we've painted white. But watch what it allows us to do. Because it's more or less the same size as a snooker ball, we can position it in line, for example, with the black here to make sure we pop the ball. Now, if we position the cue over the top of the ball like this, we can see down the line of the shot 
where the cue needs to hit, which was roughly there on the ball. So this time when I play the black, it's going to have a successful outcome. So if you want to know how to line up the shot perfectly every single time, then do this. Have a look along the line of the shot like we're doing here, and we can imagine a cue ball has been positioned in front of this red so we know roughly where we need to strike the red in order to pot it. Then we can go directly behind the white and imagine the cue ball in the position as I've shown here. Then we can work out where the centre of this cue ball is as we can see from the cue going straight through this white and get this point on the red here. On a thinner shot such as this one where the cue we're looking along actually misses the red entirely, I'd advise you to use this side of the cue ball to hit this side and then we can line the shot up that way. When we know this information we can walk in on the line of the shot, make sure we're striking the cue ball in the centre and keep our focus on the point we found on the object ball and then play the shot. It's important if you want to improve at the game to remember this contact point between the white and the red so you can see if it's the right place and you'll probably find if you don't remember where the white hit the object ball then you've probably missed the pot either because you weren't paying enough attention to it or you realised it was going to miss the correct point and you just looked away. Either way, you definitely need to look at the correct point so you know what you're doing next time and know how that shot went. The difference in ability between people who can do this and people who can't is dramatic. Something we haven't talked about is impact throw. Just know for now that this will have an effect of straightening everything up and you'll need to cut balls very very fractionally more than you think and it's an effect that's very similar to how this plant's made. Now everything we talked about the cam system so far only works if you're hitting it in the centre in the vertical plane like this. Snooker side shots will explain this but just be aware I didn't know how a microphone worked when I made it and you can see the full cam system here and remember don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and check out the website for latest news. See you later.